It's prosperity which creates the technology that can keep the earth healthy. Well, I said I wasn't going to do it, and yet here I am back on YouTube. I did this simply because, much to my amazement, uh, having not made a video in several months, I actually received a couple of subscribers, among them um, Mr. Joe Friendly, who is somebody that I admire greatly, and thank you very much for subscribing to the Vegematic Deluxe Show. Tonight I'd like to talk to you a little bit about what I perceive as YouTube mind control. Now, YouTube mind control is very subtle, a little more subtle than the traditional media, yet it's still mind control. It's still dominated by Madison Avenue, by big money interests, by huge corporations. It's not like Google is a tiny little entity. It should have been broken up years ago under antitrust laws if the antitrust laws were enforced by somebody who was not beholden to huge corporations. Of course, we all know that uh, traditional political parties in all Western democracies are by and large controlled by the corporatocracy. The corporatocracy wants to continue poisoning us uh, with oil products, shipping oil in dangerous pipelines or in train cars that explode and kill people. Oil. What a wonderful, marvelous thing oil was at the turn of the century. The, the turn of the century, you know, from the 19th to the 20th century. We probably should have stopped using it, oh, probably mid-20th century, but uh, there was no excuse by the 70s, because by the 70s we all knew what this was going to produce. This was not uh, a secret. But a decision was made, and in the 80s it was full steam ahead, or rather full oil burning crap ahead. And now we are at the precipice, of course, uh, the precipice of um, completely devastating the earth, the all for the sake of the a few healthy. wealthy corporations who now rule us via the political class. Titans of Dickery at the top are, are short-term greedy. They want the money now. They don't give a fuck about 20 years from now. That's all it is, you know? And they tell us we got to cut back. Everybody's got to cut back. We, uh, we don't have money for that. We don't have money for infrastructure. We don't have money for education. We, we, the amount of money we dump into war and the military could solve all of this overnight. We have 900... <laughs> 900 military bases around the world. Meanwhile, our economy is filled with debt. Our people are filled with Kentucky Fried Chicken. The chicken's filled with hormones. The hormones filled with mercury. And we don't know what the fuck mercury is filled with because we defunded NASA. <laughs> we used to be the country that put a man on the moon, and now your average American man couldn't break the Earth's gravitational pull to stand up without the help of friends and family. I have never once gotten a standing ovation at a U.S. comedy club, and it's because physics won't allow it. Hi, guys. This is your old doomsday tourist behind the wheel of his turbocharged Saab 900 or something, and I'm in Valentine, Texas. Valentine, Texas, here on this cloudy, bleak Sunday morning. What are, what's going on in Valentine, Texas in 2014? I don't know what this town used to look like. I guess maybe this happened in uh, 
Maybe this happened in 2008. You know, you can stop pretty much anywhere in Valentine. Well, they do have a public library. Amazingly, the K. Johnson Public Library uh, exists. This is the old whistle stop. There you go. The whistle has stopped. I don't have any idea what this was over here. Okay. This building was the Highway Cafe. There you go. There's the Highway Cafe. I mean, I've never seen anything like this, guys. I mean, this is a, this is literally a 21st century ghost town. I mean, every single house boarded up, no trespassing. Uh, you know, I don't know how many people this town used to have in it. It's just, I mean, this is creepy. Uh, just house after house, just boarded up, and now they're claiming this guy a dentist, family and cosmetic dentistry. Unbelievable. You can still go to the dentist in Valentine, Texas, but you just can't go to the store. There's another lovely home. Here's one of the uh, gas stations boarded up. Gas stations with an abandoned house next to it. And uh, the church, it's Sunday morning. But uh, I don't see anyone in the church. Good Lord. This whole vision of a free market capitalism versus communism, it's all bullshit, okay? Because no such ideal will ever be achieved, period. It is not within human nature to be completely uh, uncompetitive, as you know was the notion in, in this classless uh, society that uh, the you know, Marxist doctrine uh, had envisioned. Uh, and it's equally uh, stupid to believe that there's any such thing as, or ever could be, as free market capitalism. There is no such thing. In fact, we should strike this word freedom from our vocabulary because it really, in reality, we are very limited as, as a human species. There's no such thing as absolute freedom because your absolute freedom is going to trample on somebody else's absolute freedom. Case closed. So I'm not 
completely anti-capitalist per se, but what I am against is robber bearing capitalism. What I am against is this complete uh, obfuscation of uh, human need, human humans in, in particular. You take those two together, that we are nothing, and of that nothing right now is everything, and it should change the way we behave, it should change the way we act. We should be caring about, right now, caring about our shared humanity rather than giving a fuck about our looks or our clothes, our texts or our tweets, the cash in our wallets or the rash on our balls. But we can't, we can't, and the reason we can't is because of our ego as a species. We all think we're so fucking special, says the guy on stage begging you to love him. Like many people at the time, when YouTube first came along, I was enthralled. I figured at last, a medium that people can use, um, something that could democratize the media. And alternative sites were popping up and things were looking real good for a while. And of course, eventually it became too big. So when it became too big and became very obvious that it was going to be profitable, multimedia corporations, of course, scooped it up. I mean, it, you can't call Google at this point anything more than an enormous uh, media conglomerate, much like the other media conglomerates in the traditional media. So now that we know that we can't trust anything that the traditional media says anymore because of the in immense corporate control, many of us have gone to the alternative media. And it's becoming more and more difficult in some ways. I would say that YouTube engages in mind control um, this way. Now, as an experiment, I started keeping track of the things that I searched and watched and the things that YouTube's recommendations were. And it would always seem to me that if you had some sort of political dissenting view, that um, YouTube would automatically send you these like either ridiculous conspiracy theory nonsense, uh, which is one form of disinformation, or um, libertarian propaganda uh, disguised as freedom and democracy in action, uh, no doubt funded by those uh, bastions and champions of democracy. The Koch brothers, among many others, Sheldon Adelson, we all know the cast of characters by this point. Well, I guess by not paying attention to our democracy, we've lost it. Gradually, slowly, in little bits and pieces over the years. You know, I am old enough now to look back on my life and see different periods where change would have been possible change in a positive, uh, intelligent direction. But instead, uh, many people chose to, you know, um, hey, let the good times roll. Let's have, let's have lots of money. Let's have fancy cars and let's not give a shit. And of course, the decade of the 80s was born. The decade of greed is good. Gre Some of us never thought greed was good. But we are all portrayed, and particularly my generation, is falsely uh, portrayed as some kind of money-grubbing uh, parasites on the world when if you actually look into it, uh, many people my age are just as impoverished as the rest of us and that is more of a class struggle. But you will find a generational struggle being promoted along with racial differences, along with any difference that we can find between people and we'll encourage them to argue about it while the earth burns, while climate change goes unaddressed, unconcerned about, because we're more concerned about our own particular ideology than we are for the survival of the species. That is my contention. It's only an opinion. You can take it or you can leave it, but 
to my way of thinking, this has become obvious that YouTube has become nothing more than mind control. By the way, there's a nice little trick. If you can't find, if you're tired of YouTube and you're, you, you can't find anything to watch on YouTube anymore because all of the smaller channels have been just hidden so, you know, it's a big secret. They won't let you at them. Well, I'll tell you what you do. Go into your search bar and type in D, say. Okay. So uh, everything, just hit your search and D. So everything D will come up. Well, then you filter it by last hour or if there's nothing there, today. So you can find smaller channels that will, that are, you know, being systematically ignored uh, by this method. It's a little painstaking because you're going to have to go through, you know, a lot of like real estate stuff and, and crap, you know, just all, and, and, you know, stuff in foreign languages that you don't understand and, and et cetera, et cetera. But I would say one out of every maybe 25, 30 of these channels, you're going to find somebody that has things to say that's not allowed to say them. So that would be my first recommendation in defeating uh, YouTube mind control. Secondly, I think that people have become so narcissistic that they do not know how to form any sense of community anymore. Um, there's a, this attitude, and it's particularly noticeable on YouTube, where people want to be some kind of YouTube star because being famous is after all the most important thing you could possibly do in this world and as long again it's the the individualization of concerns it's the the narcissistic belief that you are special and you are more important than others you are not more important than anybody else the president of Exxon is no more important than the homeless person sleeping in the street and scrounging for a meal. We all, we all think we're so fucking special. A surprising number of people think they've been alien anal probed, all right? That life forms have come millions of light years just to find out what's up their butts. But in reality, we are just a little speck on a piece of wood floating in the middle of a thousand oceans. And the irony is, if we could appreciate we're nothing, then we could live like we actually matter. Thank you guys for coming out. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys. We are all human beings and we all want the same things. We want love, we want friendship, we want to be respected and treated with dignity. Why is that so hard to understand? Why do we have to divide everybody into these groups with rigid ideologies or narcissistic ideas of stardom and fame? Why do they do this? Why do they push this crap on us constantly? Well, of course, because as long as you can keep feeding these divisions, nobody's going to address the real problems. And the real problems are that democracy has been stolen out from under us. It has been stolen out from under most of the Western world. Um, they uh, use various mechanisms for this, uh, the most important of which I would say is insane trade policies so that we all run to the store and buy Bangladeshi goods. And I've been uh, shopping lately. Okay. Very, very, almost impossible to find anything that's manufactured in a first world country. And if I find it, I buy it immediately, regardless if it costs five or ten times more. Because I will not support those slave master bastards that are free tradering their way across the world, destroying communities, destroying agriculture, destroying everything they can put their bloody hands on. I am not going to support it anymore. And I encourage any of you that try, try, and I know it's hard, try not to buy sweatshop goods. It's really difficult.
because especially with the economy being what it is, uh, it's, it's almost impossible to afford the very few manufactured goods that are still made by non-slave labor. So in that way, this is something small that we can perhaps do that might make an impact if, if we could come together and uh, overcome our racial, our stereotypes, our ageist stereotypes, uh, libertarian versus liberal stereotypes. Some people just like to argue and just like to bitch. Look at the comments on YouTube. Unbelievable. The hatred, the nastiness, the just outright vileness that people post on the comments on YouTube. There was a video I watched the other day that made me feel really ill to my stomach. And let me tell you what it was. It was by one of the main YouTube conglomerate channels, I don't know, but saying, asking the question, is it now socially acceptable to be anti-Semitic? Well, that was kind of a puzzling thing for me. And I, I watched it and I looked at the comments and I thought, my God, it's Germany, 1934. That's what it is. Now they're going to start picking on religious groups. Are we done with the Muslims? We're we done with the, you know, it's all divided to separate, to separate. And I am so tired of people that promote hatred or that are simple minded people that think that it's the Jews doing this, that it's, I am horrified by what's going on in the Middle East. I am horrified by what Israel is doing, by their disgusting behavior. And many people who are Jewish are horrified. Don't you realize that, all you people? I mean, the comments I see make me so angry that people can forget the past so quickly that can place blame and scapegoating on some narrow bunch of people. It's sad. And they use it as an excuse for all their inbred prejudice. The same thing when I watched Ferguson Live, the, the, the uh, YouTube feed from that. The comments, the racial epithets, the unbelievable, disgusting. So what kind of world are these people promoting? A better world by encouraging hatred against everybody? No, we've got one common enemy. And we have one common enemy, and that enemy is the corporate state. And we have one tool to bring it down, and that is nonviolent resistance. And nonviolent resistance is the only possibility to get us out from this mess that has been created slowly over the last 35 or so years, beginning with the, the election of Ronald Reagan and his band of zealots, and we're still paying the price for that. I'm Canadian, I'm not even American, and I'm paying the price for it because we had one of our uh, neocon brilliant people in uh, power that brought in free trade, uh, Mr. Brian Mulroney, who after being prime minister went, uh, you know, was on the board of uh, Archer Daniels Midlands, a great GMO company. Hmm food company. That's where it's at. Control the food. Does anybody notice that food tastes like shit lately? Fruit with no flavor. They've managed to actually take all the flavor out of apples. I only eat apples once a year when they're in season usually because I, I, they taste crisp and sour and I really like them. Not anymore. They have no taste. They have they look beautiful, sure, they're just all fancy and fresh. And you take a bite out of it, there's no flavor. 